we're not supposed to be afraid of death. I am. What happened to life? You lazy man. You coward. Why didn't you do more? Well, when he was a little boy and he was asked what he wanted to do when he grew up, he said he wanted to be either a, a parson or a clown. <laughs> He's very clever, and I often think to myself, this is absolutely crazy. Here you are without the hate me to your name, and yet, you know, you ought to be one of these people running the country instead of the daft lot we've got now. Um, <laughs> but he wouldn't want to do that. Um, but he's capable of extraordinary things. He is an extraordinary person. I've known Garnet for uh, more than 30 years. He's, uh, he's an unusual character. He's, um, he's highly talented uh, in many directions, but he's also a sort of rather romantic idealist. He embarks on so many things which are interesting and valuable, but really never give him any money. He's always been short of money, painfully short on occasion. I mean, recently he got interested in, uh, in Houdini and um, I helped him make a part for uh, this, this box, this sort of trunk that he was going to climb into and then he's got to get out of. What about the first one? Well, maybe the leg comes up, leg over side. They've all got tremendous potential but they don't necessarily all, all sort of materialise into anything. And Garnet's always sort of struggled a bit like that. I've got uh, not only this, but also the mind reading, of course, and walking through a brick wall. <laughs> it's when he's working on, on his own that, he, that everything runs out of steam. Ultimately, it always does. You're going to have to give me a hand. I 
I still don't, I still don't have a wife or children of my own. You know, what could I offer a woman? I can't really set up a household. I couldn't afford to pay a mortgage or run a car. Well, I, I don't even drive a car. But I suppose, you know, that sense of, um, you know, ultimate um, intimacy and union with, with somebody is still something that a part of me yearns for and, and, and will do all my life, whatever happens. About 20 years ago, I visited the Highlands for the first time. In search of what, I don't know. I love the idea of the solitude and the, and the isolation. I didn't have a tent and I didn't have a sleeping bag. All I had really in the way of provisions was two fruit loaves and 60 um, embassy number one. I'd made the mistake of assuming that the numbers on the contour lines refer to feet, uh, whereas in fact they refer to meters. So I was somewhat out in my calculations. Help! And I found myself slipping and sliding and tumbling and eventually I more or less rolled onto a tiny little section of beach and wedged in the rock, standing perpendicularly, was this uh, curious staff. It's this. The, uh, the mysterious staff of Goulvain, I call it. But this staff has haunted me for all these years. This is where I went 20 years ago, and that's where I found the staff. Yeah, was it hidden or...? It, was, it, it was wedged in the bank of the stream, on the far side of the stream. It was wedged in your up. Yeah. I had to get into the stream and wade through the water in order to get this thing. You found it. It, it is very, it's very strange, stopped. yes. In 1746, two ships arrived on the west coast of Scotland, bearing a cargo of gold, 40,000 golden coins. This money was intended as a war chest for Bonnie Prince Charlie, who wanted to regain the throne on behalf of the Stuart line, and who had a lot of supporters, especially in Scotland. But by the time the money arrived, Bonnie Prince Charlie and his Highland army had already been defeated at the Battle of Culloden. And so the money was carried into the Highlands and hidden somewhere on the shores of Loch Arkeg. which is exactly where I found myself stranded 20 years ago. Apparently, they buried the gold under a rock in a rivulet.
Well, I found the staff wedged into a rock in a small rivulet. Maybe the staff that I found in the stream, in fact, is a marker for the position of the gold. What I want to do is to go back up there and have a look. At a conservative estimate, uh, it would be worth something in the order of one billion pounds. He is actually challenging uh, the possibility of this gold being there. He's had that stick all, all, all these years, and basically the story is based, based, based around the discovery of that and everything, everything that it means. What I need to do, I need you to put your dose of steroid up. I don't think you're having enough steroid. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And that means to go to six tablets once a day, which is 30 milligrams. 30, OK. Yes. Any yes. other problems? No? No, no, mm. not really. Well, well, except to being old. Well, that, unfortunately, <laughs> is not something we're um, very good at treating on the National Health. I should be 90 this month. I know, you've got a big birthday coming up, haven't you? Yes, that's exciting. Same, we'll have to get you a bit better for that. Same day as the Queen, so oh, she's lucky to share my isn't birthday. That, isn't that a treat? <laughs> <laughs> It has been very frustrating for me for the past few years because if I'm going to make a reasonable job of looking after my mum, that means I've got to be around the place and I've got to, you know, sort of dance to the whatever tune is necessary, the doctor's visits and all the tablets and all this sort of thing. No sooner have I done one thing than, lo and behold, it's time to do another one. Time's going by, um, and here I am just sort of stuck in this uh, sort of nowhere land, this limbo. Source. During the war, a uh, fellow student was Lucian Freud. He tried to seduce me avidly when I was 19 and was very annoyed when I wouldn't, uh, <laughs> wouldn't succumb. What else have I done? Back in the 70s, I made up action songs and singing games for children. One of these songs, it's gone worldwide. It's sung all over the world by children. When all the cows were sleeping and the sun had gone to bed, up jumped the scarecrow, and this is what he said. I'm a dingle dangle scarecrow with a flippy floppy hat. And I shake my hands like this, and I shake my feet like that. When all the hens were roosting, and the moon behind a cloud, up jumped the scarecrow and shouted very loud. I'm a dingle dangle scarecrow with a flippy floppy hat. And I shake my hands like this. And I shake my feet like that. Well, thinking this through, there's um, quite a lot of costs involved. I'm going to need a, a boat, obviously. And um, there's got to be a vehicle to tow the boat or take the boat up there. And um, maybe metal detectors, life jackets, I don't know what else. 
um, and it's all adding up to quite a bit of money that I haven't really got. I could ask my mum for some money, I suppose, but I don't really want to do that. Um, well, we'll just have to see. So we'll go down here and join Joe, who is doing some extra preparation on the boat here. Right. OK, it's a bit wibbly-wobbly, but... It's all right, isn't it? Uh, a nice firm grip and up. It doesn't feel too bad. For a second or two. Yeah. <laughs> OK. OK. Looks magnificent, doesn't it? Uh, right. Uh, well, I've known Anne's. Um, Anne's a bit older than me, so uh, she's maybe sixty-two or something. I'm sixty-four now, so I was about twenty, twenty-four when I met him. Well, twenty-five, thirty. Well, it's about thirty-five years, something like that. No, forty years. <laughs> we'll just start off with the absolute basic. Turn it on. <laughs> He's one of the most imaginative, um, exciting people that I've ever met. Uh, it's not very well hidden. Oh, right, I'll hide it more <laughs> a bit. <laughs> but he has such high ideals. Yeah, straight on it. Yeah, 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 yeah straight on it. It's quite hard to live up to to. Um, the, the, the sort of things that he, he, he would like a woman to be, I think. <laughs> I'm just going to hammer this in and I'll make garlic sweep. He hasn't seen where I've put it. There. <laughs> Look at garlic. <laughs> you... <laughs> Sorry, he's just pulling face. <laughs> oh, there, there it is. There it is. Yeah, well done. That's one of them. Good. Something <laughs> in there. Too good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Have a fight tonight. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of a love interest, you might say, I don't know, or I, I, I might have done anyway, um, with respect to, um, to uh, Jenny who plays the piano in the candle. And, uh, and I wasn't expecting that. And, and she said, oh, oh, have you ever tiled a bathroom? And I said, yes. So, um, you know, we're kind of talking about maybe tiling her bathroom, which I'd like to do. Well, there's a part of me that wants to be in love. That's part of my nature, I suppose. I want to be in love, and I can't, I can't, I can't stop it any more than I can start it. And I can't start it any more than I can stop it. Well, we're just on our way down to the uh, Clockhouse Caf, which is near the station, in order to meet uh, Jilly. Oh, Garnet, I'm so sorry, I completely forgot. <clears throat> uh, well, better go in the cafe and uh, 
Send her a text saying, does that mean you're not coming today at all? Which, which it implies, because that's all she says. There's lots of exclamation marks and four O's in so sorry. I seem to have been asleep, really. You know, I've been waiting for something to come my way that never really has. If the wild dead don't do ya, then the waiting show will. Cause the bottom does drop out. If you're hoping to fill the shoes of another with great big ideals, I'm just waiting for. I'm waiting for a letter. God, it's experiments or his schemes or his projects. Of the gold. They're the friends of his life, they're the women in, the, in his life, they're the children of his life. This isn't just a trip on some historical quest. This is it. This is Garnet's life. Life is short before you know it. Turn around uh, and you're tiny. Turn around and you're grown. Oh God, if I don't get on with something now, the whole of life will have flitted past. Twenty years ago, when I found the staff in the stream, no one knew where I was. I had no food or shelter. I was lost. I lay down near the stream and resigned myself to die. I had no fear. Um, well, for the purposes of this um, expedition, I'm obviously going to need a vehicle and stuff like that, you know, which are fairly expensive things. I did have a fella stood by who was going to put up some money, but he dropped out. So it's getting a little bit uh, difficult at the moment. So, so the, I suppose the, the point is, would it be okay? Yes, yes, yes. I mean, I could repay it, I guess, you know, when I've managed to sell the things and so yes, on. Yes, yes. That's okay, that's fine, yes. Yeah, that's really good. Thank you. <laughs> there he is. This is it. Oh, how about that? <laughs> Hello. Oh, wow, how about that? I know, this is it. It's four wheel drive. Yeah. It's all MOT. Mm -hmm. Good tyres. He says it's been reliable. He says it's one lady owner. I'm not too sure about that. <laughs> oh, oh, how about that? The old Levels. landy. God, I'd love to drive it, actually. 
Oh, you've managed to lock the keys in somewhere. Yeah, it's exactly what I've managed to uh, do. Uh, <laughs> Are all the keys on that key ring? Yes. Check that door. Oh, that's all right. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> the best, mate. Okay, nice I'm sure it'll get you there. Okay, okay brilliant. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks again. You're welcome. All, this. all the best. We're going to the remotest part of the remotest place in the whole of Europe. <laughs> Could, by some strange chance, be you know, sort of virgin opportunity that has merely been mm. overlooked mm. Um, over years and years and years. I mean, he spells it out. He spells it's it out. It's on the map, isn't it? Now. What we're going to do today is test the boat here. That's it. She's had a bit of a knock already. <laughs> Uh, well, this will be the um, helium balloon. Maybe that's the only size you can get. really. So now it's a question of retracing my steps. I've got to get back precisely to that point on the stream where I found the staff before. I know I came in through here somehow and over this mountain range here. The question is exactly where. This is the difficult part. Now, one odd thing I do remember is that when I was halfway up the mountain, down below on the flat I could see a mysterious structure probably made of stone. Um, it had a very, very distinctive shape, something like this. A straight line broken by a circle. Press and hold the button until the indicators turn on. So. Come so, on, I guess it's yeah. working. Yeah, that'd be the... Yeah. Hello. <laughs> OK. So if I can find this, then I think I can use it as a guide, as a pointer towards the pass that leads up and over the mountain, precisely to that point on the stream. 
so I've got to, I don't know, I've got to figure out a way of rediscovering this. Identifying this shape, which of course is most clearly visible or distinctive from the air, from above. She collapsed. And um, she's, um, yeah, she's in hospital at the moment, which is, um, which worries me deeply, really, because, um, I mean, they keep talking about sending her back home, and maybe they will, or maybe they won't. And I've just got a feeling that maybe she won't come home now. I don't know, don't know, don't know how to, um, don't know how to cope with it really. In some churches where there are sort of murals of medieval depictions of hell, and it shows all these little demons poking people with pitchforks. Oh, that's a bit what it feels like. I don't feel very old. I feel about 40 inside my head. You know, you suddenly look at your arms and you think, oh my God, it was an old person's hand. And it just, you know, I find it shocking, really. When I look at myself, I have very vivid dreams, and I quite often dream that I'm much younger. I dream that I can run and dance and swim and do all those things. for a minute, <laughs> get, get my head together. I'm, 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 I'm very conflicted about the way I feel about it. I have to say I'm conflicted. I don't, you know, sometimes I'm just, I'm, I feel annoyed by it. I feel, I feel ground to dust by it, I really do. And I think, when will this ever end, you know? When will I be free? Sometimes I find myself thinking, you know, for God's sake, why don't you just die? You, you, should, you, know, you bastard, what, you shouldn't think that at all. Um, you know. Bless her, let her keep going as long as she possibly can.
I've often thought, well, you know, my poor mum, she must wonder where I'm going, what I'm doing. I don't know what she might ideally have wanted for me, I don't know. But whatever it was, I'll never quite be that. Lots of people have these ambitious ideas. We all do, really, and we talk about it because it's a nice idea. But will it ever happen? Does it ever happen? Uh, of all the things I nearly done, there's many, many, many things that I've nearly done, but not. Show me a man who hasn't. But, um... Hopefully, there's still time yet for me to do a little bit of something with what's left of, you know, with what's left of life. Well, while I'm away, the pages will probably do more than is necessary. Oh, they'll be rushing it out with food and yes, and cups of tea and things. I'm and sure they will. Yes. Yes, and Anne. And Anne, and Anne, Anne will show her face. Yes. Um. So I think that I think it should be fine. Touch wood. So uh, I think it, think it should be okay. I mean, I was worried, that, you know, that maybe. Well, I don't know. Yeah. Well, that sort of sounds all right anyway. Yeah. It, 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 well. Yeah. I'll be fine. You'll be fine, yeah. I'll do the door. Well, I hope you find something, whatever it is. <laughs> if it's not gold, it's his heart's desire.
it's too beautiful. So look over there, that's so beautiful. It's beyond beyond description or belief. been here but I mean it is just stunning it's amazing I mean I've never seen anything like it everywhere you turn there's a mountain there's water there is wildlife it's a dream place Charles did bring some gold with him. Um, there's a bit of a story that one of Rob Roy's sons was one of the ones who was also entrusted with it. Uh, whether the gold exists or not, is that another story. Apparently it's buried along some place along the, the banks of uh, Walk Arcade. Uh, nobody's ever found it. Um, <laughs> what's the chances of finding it? There's also a rumour that it might be up in Glen Peen. And the rough bounds of Moida. Yes. Yeah, it's yeah. supposed to be another cache at Bannockburn. Near Bannockburn yeah. House, there's supposed to be another treasure chest buried. But that's probably under the motorway now. My idea is that the um, rock in the stream where I found the staff all those years ago might conceal some sort of uh, underwater cave or cavern or hollow in the river bank, something like that. That's where you think the gold is buried? Yes. was quite a crucial moment, you know. On the test last time, the uh, propeller let us down, and uh, we, you know, we've, we've mended it. 
advert, but it hasn't had another test. So this is the key moment. That boat has got to work. I was brought up mainly by my mum and by my grandmother, her mother, because my parents split up when I was about 18 months old. My dad, he um, in fact ran off with the woman, I think next door but one on the other side of the road or something, somebody very close by. I was 32, I think, 32, and I went round to his house, I tracked him down, and he, and he said, uh, he said to me, who are you? I don't know what a father is, really, I don't know what a father's supposed to be, that's probably one of the reasons why I haven't had children myself. Where there should be um, a dad, there's just a sort of dad shaped hole. I would have found it very difficult to stay to go on it all that time. And I, I can't really imagine what life would have been like all these years. We were, you know, very close for, a, oh, I don't know, a total of seven years, something like that. We were together for about eight years. We, you know, she'd stay with me and I'd stay with her. We had a lot of fun, you know, because he was always so exciting, he had such good ideas about things, and we'd go off on adventures. And... We've been on holiday together, we went to the Red Sea. You know, we'd take the train with our bicycles and we'd go painting for the day. And, and the Sinai Desert and places like that. And You know, we, it was great fun. He's, he's, he's hard to, to, to be with, but also he's very exciting to be with. She couldn't afford to, you know, wait around. And I, I don't know, I had other ideas. I thought, I don't know what I thought. It's hard for me to have found out that, you know, my relationships that I pursued when I was in my 30s and so forth, that, you know, wonderful as they were, 
and painful as they were, what did it amount to? You know, what's left? After I'd gone and I split up, I, I, I had children, two children with somebody else, yeah. Which was hard for me, because I really wanted to have children with Garnet. We can cut that out. <laughs> but you didn't want No. Ah. Uh -huh. 